I am not Jeffrey Snover, as uh, indicated there. Uh, my name is Steve Murawski. I am on the community engineering team at Chef. And I come from uh, primarily a Windows Systems Administrator background. And I managed to convince Jeffrey to give me just a few moments of uh, his, uh, his precious time here to just uh, share a few thoughts on why PowerShell is so important to the Chef community and, and to Chef on Windows and our management story there. So without uh, further ado, PowerShell is extremely important in the Chef ecosystem when it comes to managing Windows Server. And I took this quote, I translated it from the original Greek. I might have taken a few liberties, but uh, <laughs> PowerShell has done wonders to uh, bring a consistent command line and automation story to the Windows platform. And its adoption has, has spread across the gamut of uh, capabilities of Windows Server over, over the course of you know, 2008 Server, 2008 R2, tw uh, into 2012, when command line coverage exploded for capabilities in Windows Server and managing the core operating system. And with that, that gives tools like Chef great reach into that platform. So PowerShell in itself really enables a couple of key scenarios. First off, it's a great command line. And as, you know, as we know, working in this you know, automation space, if you have a command line, you can start to build a repeatable process we build scripts, we build, uh, we build uh, orchestration tools that will run these command line utilities in a you know, set case. But you need, those, you need that jumping off point. You need that command line tool to build that process. And having it as a command line tool, because we had, we had VBScript in the Windows space for a while, but it wasn't, it wasn't that REPL experience where we could type something at the command line, take a look at the output, play with it a little bit, and then move on to the next step. So PowerShell brought that experience to the command line for us. And then the, the real joy of PowerShell for me is that it's this nice bridge between .NET, WMI, COM, basically all the things I care about in the Microsoft, uh, in the Microsoft management experience are bridged via PowerShell, so I can work with them in one nice environment. So basically. Anything I need to do is reachable from PowerShell itself. Then we get into how Chef uses PowerShell. And if you've dug any, any, uh, to any depth into how we automate the Microsoft stack with Chef, you're going to find some PowerShell or some command, uh, com some command line execution happening in the background. Microsoft as a platform is very API driven instead of file driven or document driven like on most of our Nix platforms. So we have to make API calls and PowerShell gives us a sane way to do that. So you'll find support for PowerShell right in the DSL with PowerShell script and as part of the guard interpreters uh, so that we can verify that the system state is what we need it to be before we actually execute or skip executing one of our resources. With Mixit Lib Shellout, you see that used a lot in uh, lightweight resource providers or behind the scenes where we need to do things on Windows and we can execute that, get the results back and bring that, and bring that forward to where we, where we need to in our, in our resources. And if you guys are interested, stick around for the next session because that's where we're gonna talk much more deeply about desired state configuration and the DSC script resource that we released in February, and the DSC resource resource, gotta love that, uh, that we released like a couple days ago. Uh, but PowerShell is the driver behind those capabilities as well. And as Chef embraces PowerShell, our capabilities in the Microsoft stack continue to grow. So with that, I'm very pleased to introduce and welcome Jeffrey Snover, the distinguished engineer from Microsoft, who invented PowerShell and is here to tell us a little bit about it from the ground up. All right, great, thanks so much. Howdy. 
Great. So great to be here. Before we start, I want to get a feel for the audience. It's kind of hard to see with these lights, but I'll try. How many people are brand new to PowerShell? Sort of beginner PowerShell. Okay, great. And how many are using, how many are like advanced PowerShell users? Okay, a few of those. And then how many people have been using PowerShell version 5, the early previews? Oh, wonderful. Okay, so we're going to have a mix. We're going to have a mix here. Uh, what I hope to talk through was what I was going to say. So I'm going to kind of describe PowerShell and the usage model. We always had in mind this admin usage, usage model, right? You know, who reads documentation, right? You're fooled to read documentation. It's always wrong, always out of date. Real admins know the way you find out how a system works is you use the system. You get on a command line and you find out how things really work. And so you start off with an interactive shell, and then you say, okay, that's great, but now I want to automate the experience. So then you put it in a script, and then you say, okay, well, that's great, except that I'm going to give it to that guy, and I don't want to be embarrassed, so I'm going to formalize it. And then you say, oh, I'm going to make it more public and use it in production, so you make it more formalized. So I'm going to talk about this variation from going from interactive shell to a very formal programming. And the point of it is not, oh, the right way to use PowerShell is this or that or that. It is, hey, what problem do I have to solve? What's the quality of the solution that I need to have? And then you'll find you don't have to switch tools. It was one of the things I always kind of didn't like about Linux. I was a longtime Unix guy. And uh, is that, you know, if I was doing something ad hoc, I'd use one tool. If I wanted to be fast, I'd use another. And if I wanted to share it with people, I'd use another. And that just always seemed wrong to me. So we wanted to have one tool to span all those environments. Next thing I'm going to talk to you about is repositories. That's a new thing that's coming with PowerShell version 5. We will also, not, not a promise, it's an intent, intend to take some of the functions of the repositories and make it available on previous versions of Windows, or sorry, of PowerShell. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about PowerShell ISC. And I'm really not going to talk about desired state configuration. If I have time, uh, I have not, by the way, planned out how long to take for each section, et cetera. We're just going to have some fun. If I have a chance, I'll tee up desired state configuration. But really, the whole point of this is to, is to have uh, uh, Steve, at, right after that in this room, talk about desired state configuration. So you're in the right place. There's lots of fun. So I got about 400 slides. Nah, we're not going to do that. It's, we're done with slides. Like, totally done. Go away. OK, behold. Hello? Oh, no. That's not going to work. Yeah. We're in extend mode, and that's, that's not good. Come on. Yes, there it is. Behold, PowerShell, zen-like in its simplicity. OK? OK. <laughs> and I'm going to switch, switch, quickly switch from here and go to, to ISC, which I, I really quite enjoy, PowerShell ISC. So the first thing to get in focus, in fact, I'll do it from here. First thing to get in focus is PowerShell is a shell, okay? So you can run all the stuff you can think of in a shell, right? You can run calc, you can run notepad. In fact, it's a better uh, shell than most in that, hey, you don't need to bring up calc. It can add 2 plus 2. It can add 4 plus 4, too. It's pretty amazing. Here, look, 2 times 2. Even got the same number. It's just an amazing shell. Anyway, so you can do all sorts of stuff. Um, we have, uh, uh, we have you know, get date, although someone actually just re, uh, the other day filed a bug on this, said, I've been using this for five years and I'm still single. It's a crappy command. So it does, doesn't quite help with that, but, but it's a shell. And so the cool thing about a shell is you can say, um, you can assign things to variables. So you can say, like, dollar sign $x equals get variable. And then say dollar sign $x dot add, add what? Add days. Let's see, well, what's uh, 10 days from now? Oh, that's going to be Sunday. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, here's one of my favorite ones. So, <laughs> now, it's been a while, but when my daughter was uh, uh, growing up, she was just fixated on Christmas. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. When's Christmas going to come, right? Do you have any kids like that? Anyway, so she was always fixated on Christmas. And so what I did was I said, okay, well, here's how you do that. I said, date, time. So, by the way, so what you can do is you can cast strings, 12, 25, 2015. Right? Uh, 2000. You'll see, I. <laughs> okay, here's a little trick. I'm, I've got incredible flaws. 
PowerShell is such a powerful, powerful environment because I'm such a deeply flawed human. Now that sounds like a joke, it's not a joke. I'll show you concrete examples, but you'll see me transpose, mistype all throughout this. It's not like a ploy. Okay, so here, no, damn it. Close break. Okay, so there, you took a string and you cast it to a daytime. Now the interesting thing about that is because then you can say minus get date. And so then I told, I, I said, uh, here's how many milliseconds it is till Christmas, honey. Okay, so that's kind of fun. And of course, then she'd ask me over and over again. And so what I did was I said, well, let's put this in a function. Days till X mess. Squiggle bracket. And then she'd say, how, many, how long till Christmas, Daddy? And I'd say, and I'd give her the answer, okay? So that was great, that was great, except then uh, the year rolled around, right? And I was giving her negative numbers, right? So at some point you might say, well, hey, I need to parameterize this, and in particular, I'm gonna take a parameter, which let's say I'm just gonna bring in, bring in the uh, dollar sign args of zero, okay? So then what I'll do is I'll say days till Christmas, 2015, okay, that's right, or 2016, ha ha, right, 2017. So now I am a rock star. I've got now something that's gonna last forever, except if I forget it or I give the wrong value, right? So it's like, okay, well, that's not quite right. You wanna be a little more formal than that, right? And by the way, what was it? Like help. Days till X. Yeah, that's, that's, okay, so I got some help. Was that helpful? No, that's not helpful. So then I say, okay, well, actually, I want to be a little bit more formal here. So go back up here, and I say, well, let's give me a parameter, param, dollar sign year, and then I'll just say dollar sign year. Okay, so now when I say help, oh, look tells me dollar sign year, you know, days till Christmas and year. So now I can say days till, days till Christmas minus year 2015. Woo, rock star, rock, 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 blue. No, that's not good, okay. So <laughs> now the question is, anyway, so where I was going with this is that you can step, oh, here's what I wanted to do, is I want to say days till Christmas and it still just gives an error. So now I might wanna come in here and say, okay, hey, that's great, but what I wanna do is I wanna call this a parameter, and I wanna say mandatory, and mandatory equals, should be dollar sign true, I'm just gonna say one, because I'm lazy, okay? So now when I say days till Christmas, it says, hey, I've got a mandatory parameter here, and you didn't give it to me, what year is it? I'll say, 2017, and it gives me the right answer, okay? Now, my, anyway, so that's the point, is you can start off very informal and then step by step by step become more formal, okay? So that's sort of the, the key thing I wanted to show here. Now, obviously doing a, a significant script editing on a command line, kind of hard to do, so we invented this thing called PowerShell ISE. Uh, step by step, originally the, note, the goal for this thing was to replace Notepad, Notepad was the number one script editing tool on uh, Windows, and uh, we wanted to replace that. Step by step through the use of community add-ons, et cetera, uh, this has been getting significantly better. Um, okay, so now first thing to point out here is, oh, I mentioned to you that it does, it does some great stuff, right? Two plus two, oh, no, no, sorry, two plus two. What am I doing here? Oh, you know what, I think I changed the colors. Dang, did I do that? Tell me I didn't do that. Console, foreground, white smoke. What did I do? I'm gonna stop this. Try it again. Two plus two. Ah, there we go, four. That's the right number, good. Least recently used.
Okay, what I wanted to point out was we also do uh, string math. So you can say uh, chef conf, chef conf 2015 rocks. Right? Hello, come in. Where are you? Rocks? Yeah? And then you can say times it rocks times 100. It rocks, rocks, rocks. Okay, so you can do string math. By the way, you might say, well, why would I ever want to do that? Turns out uh, star times 80 really helps aligning text. Right? So if you're ever formatting something, you can just do that. It's lots of fun. Or even better, you do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times 8, and then you can align things up. That always doesn't, doesn't quite always work because, you know, it's like, what, 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 where am I? So what I often do is I replace the zero with a space. And then you can see, right? Oh, okay, so let's see this. I want it to go to here, so that's, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 40, 45. Okay, so little tricks, fun stuff. Now, um, the key thing about PowerShell, however, is none of this. The heart of PowerShell are commandlets and objects. So commandlets are high-level, task-oriented abstractions that have a verb-noun structure. And the whole goal behind this is to be able to uh, get a world or create a world where people, you, your friends, your partners, et cetera, think about what they want, and then they type it and they get it, right? And so this is an experience I learned at, at, um, <coughs> at VMS, so at Digital. I had been a long-time Unix guy, and right in Unix, it's great, you know, awk. I know that that's the names of the guys who wrote it, and grep, global regular expression print, all you know, know all this kind of tribal knowledge. But then when somebody came on board, boy, there's a heck of a learning curve. Like, oh, well, the reason why means this, and all that crazy stuff. And then I went to VMS, and I started to use VMS and DCL, and I hated it. I just hated it, uh, because it wasn't Unix, which I had come to know and love. And at some point, I finally just sat myself down and I said, look, you know, this is the job. Learn, the, learn it. You just get, o get over that. And so when I stopped struggling with it, I learned VMS DCL. And it was incredibly regular. And afterwards, it's like, wow, this is awesome. Because the joke was, if someone put a fish finder on the VAX, what would you do? And the answer is, oh, show slash fish finder. Get slash fish finder slash property, blah, blah, blah. You'd make a set of guesses, and chances were you were right. And so that's what we're trying to achieve here. So you see in PowerShell, now, see all this. <clears throat> imagine you wanted to get all the commands. What command might you type to get all the commands? And of course the answer is get command. Now notice I didn't say get commands. <clears throat> PowerShell, everything is singular. And the reason for that is it's going to be used by everyone in the world, and in particular non-English speakers. And so get command is going to return all the commands. And obviously, you could just add an S to that. That sort of makes sense. But what happens when you want to do get child, and it's going to return multiples? What's get children? Like who? Like English speakers are going to get that, but what's non-English speakers ever going to predict that? And so what we did was we said in, in PowerShell, there are no plurals. Right? It returns plurals. And so here are all the commands. And they just keep going. It's a wonderful world. Oh, look at that. Boy, I'm just going to bask in this. <laughs> Wasn't always this way. <laughs> okay, that'll just keep going. We have great coverage these days. Now, uh, so then you say get process. Now, notice we got command completion here. And one of the reasons why is that unlike Unix, in Unix, when you type a command, um, basically the, the arguments are passed to the command, and then the command has to do the parsing. That's not the way it works in PowerShell. In PowerShell, the command tells the shell what its structure is, and then the shell understands that structure. The shell has the parser. The shell does the parsing, and then hands off structured data to the command to process. Now, one of the benefits of that approach is the shell can do IntelliSense. Okay? So it says, oh, OK, well, yeah, I want to do a name. And notice it tells you it takes a string array. So we'll just say star ss. Or it was a string array, right? So it could have said W star. So those are the things that end with SS or begin with W, right? Wonderful stuff there. Now again, that's, that's nice. Oh, actually, I screwed that up. I should have said, we start off, we say LSASS, okay? That's a fully articulated thing. 
Now, as you all know, brevity versus verbosity. Sometimes verbosity is your friend. Sometimes verbosity is your enemy. When it is 3 o'clock on Sunday morning and things are broken and people are going to come in in a couple hours and you thought you were going to go home and have dinner with your, your family Friday night or maybe not dinner but at least watch a movie with them Friday night but you've been at the office all that time because everything's been screwed up and then you open up a file and you say, okay, well, what, what, what did that thing do? And it's Pearl, right? You know that sinking feeling, right? I'm just screwed. You know, like, Oh, this is death. And so we designed PowerShell with that in mind. And so what the, with PowerShell, the idea is in that moment of crisis, you're going to open up the file and verbosity is your friend. You want to understand exactly what that script did, no ambiguity. So this, ambi this is just perfect for that. However, if you're an act interactive user, uh, that's not your friend, right? An interactive user, you want to be uh, very, very quick, right? So in PowerShell, you only need to specify enough of the parameters to disambiguate. We have aliases. We have positional parameters. And we have wildcards. Now, unlike wildcards in Unix, in Unix, wildcards only work against file systems. In PowerShell, wildcards work against most anything, okay? And it's wonderful. Again, it's one of those reasons why. Why do we do that? Because I'm so flawed. I can't type anything, right? So one of the great things about PowerShell is these commands return objects. So when I do this, look at this. I'll say pipe to get member, member. You'll notice here there is a company and a description field. Okay, so when I just type get process, okay, I'm getting these set of properties. If I wanted to, I can pipeline it to format, format table, and give the properties that I want. Okay, so name, and then what the heck was it? It was description. How do you spell description? Uh, D E S star, that's how you spell description. Company, C star, and voila, it works. Now that's not so interesting, so let's, let's get them all. Yeah, is that cool? Oh, okay, well actually, let's do this. Let's do this, this, this will make it even funner. Let's sort these by company, format group, and then let's say auto size them and group them by company. Oh, it worked. <laughs> what did I do? I, I did, oh, there you go, so it didn't. Company, here is what we'll do. Clear the screen first. So look at that. Go back up here. These aren't tagged. Display link. Here are the properties, uh, the processes associated with display link. I run Google. Don't tell my boss. Uh, Intel, Lenovo, Microsoft, Microsoft Corporation. Apparently those are two different things. Uh, okay, so it's, now notice these properties give you incredible power. Um, you can do things like what I showed you here. It's wonderful. Uh, now, at some point, I said, uh, the help's useless. Uh, actually, the PowerShell help is actually pretty good. I mean, shockingly, I know that we have spent, I mean, we've worked really hard at this. I mean, how long have we been? I guess we've been at this, I guess, probably three decades now. Uh, we've been working to teach you that, you that help is a useless endeavor, and you're a fool for trying it. I mean, we worked hard on that. Uh, turns out we kind of, that was a joke, sorry. <laughs> Didn't land, okay. <laughs> With PowerShell, the help is actually pretty reasonable. Now, there's a couple ways you can get to the help. Any guesses about how you'd get help? Oh, I like that guy. You are my man. You are my people. Get help. And what that did was it told you how to get help. Okay? So you can say get help for command, get process, and get the help for it. If you want to, you can say show window, pops it up in a window. And this is pretty cool because it's so neat. First, you can make it big, love that. Gives you all the details about the parameters, I mean, all the details. And if you want to, go to here, settings. You can ask for, oh, look at this. This says, that must mean I don't have full information. If you don't have full information, like I don't have full information, 
I'll say get command, get help, find the module. Module, there's a module. You can say update, help, minus module. And you can say star, but that'll take a while. I'm just going to say update the help here. So now, when we do that again, oh, sorry, again, what did I do? Show window. I should be able to see, oh, I'm not sure why it's not showing me examples. I don't have full help. Okay, well, I don't have full help. I should have seen full examples. Okay, so great stuff. Lots of help. I want to kind of skip forward to some fun stuff because step by step what you're going to see, oh, you know what I realized I didn't do? I didn't show you. I should have been doing this as a transcript so that you can do this. Anybody ever use transcripts? Okay, in, in Unix, uh, anybody, oh, by the way, how many people are Unix folks here? Yeah, okay, great, great. So you know script? Yeah, we have the same thing, but it, it's a little bit more predictable. It's called start transcript. So you can say start, start, transcript, C colon temp chef conf 2015 dot text. Okay, and now when I type the stuff, GPS star SS, now I'll say stop, stop transcript. Okay, created that file. If I say PS edit that file, C temp chef conf, you'll see this is what a transcript looks like. It tells you Windows PowerShell transcript start, when it happened, who the user was. If you use and run as credentials, it'll tell you who you came in on, what machine, what applications being run, the process ID, and then everything that you typed and everything that was output. Yeah? So is that cool? Now that used to be only in the console and in PowerShell version 5, 555, five, five, wonderful 5, uh, it's in everything. Question? It does not ignore passwords. No, it does not ignore passwords. That's why um, you should not have passwords in scripts. And why the best way to do passwords is you'll see whenever, there's a bunch of cases where we take passwords, and here's how you do passwords. Well, let's, let's you know what, let's find out. Let's do it again. We're going to start transcript, and we're going to say dollar sign cred equals get password, get, sorry, get credential. Uh, test, test two, <laughs> I'm not going to give you my real credentials, stop, and then, there you go. So yeah, the way you always want to deal with passwords is through PowerShell credentials. Uh, those are encrypted uh, strings and hide, hide, hide. Now this is great for those people who remembered to, to do transcripts. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you want transcripts. One is, oh, I'd like to share with you what I did, or, boy, I'm going to do something, and if I screwed up, uh, <laughs> like did things out of order, it's great to be able to go back and see, I did this, and then, I, oh, I see, I forgot that. Or, oh, look, that error message, that's what that error message must have been. But that only works if you still have the error message. So the, the gotcha, and the other reason is for security. Now, with security, you know, somebody comes in, logs, and modifies your system. We have logging, right? And it's very detailed logging. Who did what down at the parameter level. But you have no insight about, uh, it all goes into the event log. So if you were all to be logged onto a machine, pounding at the machine, if you took a look at the event log, your commands would be strewn all through it. It's all there, but then you need some process to be able to say, okay, well, that person did this thing and and segment them all out and comprehend that. And that's kind of hard to do. So in PowerShell version 5, yes, 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 the wonderful 5, policy, edit policy, here's the local group policy editor in admin templates, Windows components, Windows PowerShell, there's a new turn on PowerShell transcription. You plug this in. I've already enabled it. I've already told it where I want the transcripts to go. CPS transcripts. And so if we go take a look there, 
Right. Yes, transcripts. Do a dir. There are the transcripts that are going. And if I take a look at the last one, notepad. I think this is the last one. Voila. Here are. They remember. Remember, I started with get command. And that went on for a while. That went on for a long while. Went for, for a long while. And then, oh, look there. Get alias. Oh, boy, there's a ton of stuff here. Find package. I'm not sure I understand what I'm looking at. Anyway, so we have transcripts for everything. Um, so again, that in, comes in PowerShell version 5. There's quite a few security features. 10 minutes? You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Really? OK. Wow. Well, let me show you classes. <laughs> PowerShell version 5, we add classes. I'm going to give you this nice buildup about, remember I told you, you can start off simple, quick and dirty. You can get more formal. In PowerShell version 5, you can have, you can have classes. Now, why do you want classes? The real answer is that we're doing, by the way, when you hear classes, you think a lot of stuff. It is classes. We're going to do that over the course of time. We're implementing just enough classes so that you can write desired state configuration resources uh, very simply. And in particular, uh, it's very easy to write them, and they give you developer semantics. So let me first motivate why that's kind of a pain in the butt. So here's a function, simple function. It takes two parameters, param1 and param2. And here, let me just do this here. Let's comment this out. And notice I'm going to say, I, what it does is I say return Param2 equals Param2. So here I call that, and it returns Param2 equals value2. Right? So I did this return, Param2 equals value2. Now here, let's just say get process star ss. And notice I'm not returning that. And when I run this again, notice I get the processes as well as this. And that's just one of those hiccups. It's, it turns out those are good, sh that's the shell semantics. But it's kind of, developers see that and their heads explode. Right? They hate that. Uh, and so what we do is now with classes, you don't have that. Okay? So here is a class, class clown. Okay? It has parameters or properties, name and hair color. It has a constructor, which takes a name and hair color. It says this dollar's name equals name, et cetera. And then it has a greeting. Okay, so we're going to define this. And then we're going to call. We have a new syntax for creating objects. Okay, and so we run this. And we get an object, Bozo, whose hair color is green. And if we get Yucko the Clown and Salami and call greeting, okay, so that works. Now imagine. I went in here and did the same thing. I say, oh, well, uh, get process. OK, so now let's try that. And again, let's comment this one out. Let's comment that one out. And notice I didn't get any processes. Okay, so it has much better shell or uh, programming semantics, programming semantics that most people are going to be used to. Now, notice also here, if I go and I say, um, if I get rid of this, okay, I get a squiggle brackets, and why is that? And the answer is, okay, it's missing a return statement, so let's do this. Let's put it there. And notice here, it says not all code paths return a value from within this method. So when you declare something as returning something, you must use the return statement. Okay. Additionally, here, if I don't return something, it says invalid return statement within a void method. So the big method here is, the big thing I'm saying is that from the very beginning, PowerShell has meant to, if you read the original document, the Monad Manifesto, I said I wanted to develop a tool that could bridge both our operators and our developers. Today we got a term for it. It's called DevOps. We didn't have a term for it back then. 
what I did was I said, look, I got a bunch of people who have one set of tools and another group of people who have a different set of tools and they can't help one another. When somebody says, oh, I need some help, it's like, yeah, best of luck, my friend, I can't help you. Um, and there's no way to like, learn a set of tools and then go back and forth. So we wanted to solve that. In reality, from the very beginning, we were very strongly focused in on operators, and then step by step, we've been adding more and more developer functionality. With PowerShell version 5, we add quite a bit more developer functionality, including stuff like being able to support communities. So now, on any PowerShell version 5, you can say get package source. And what it's showing you here is I've got two repositories, a chocolatey repository and a PowerShell gallery repository. Package repository, I can do things like get, sorry, find package out grid view. And what this is going to do is go to that repository, find all the objects, and if you can see this, right, we can do things like searching for sys internals. Sys, sys. Okay, so you can do some searching here. There's a bunch of cool stuff. Well, there it is, sys internals, sys internals. Okay, and uh, now you can just go and install that from that package repository. So this is a function the Unix guys have had for a while. This is now available on Windows. And with that, boy, you know what? I got about four hours more worth of stuff to go over. So why don't we kind of switch and, and go to questions? Because I do want to give you a chance for questions. So just shout them out. Yeah, t tell me a bit about your progress in getting um, more uh, DSC providers. Oh, thank you. What a, I love that answer. By the way, so Steve's going to talk a lot about that. But when we did desired state configuration, we did do the minimal viable product approach. And with 2012 R2, uh, and all honestly, uh, DSC at that point was really kind of a version point, you know, point 0.9. Okay, it wasn't really quite a 1.0. We had an update to 2012 R2 uh, at the end of last year uh, was a very substantial increase uh, in coverage and, and uh, capabilities, and that really brings us up to sort of a PowerShell version, or DSC version 1.4 or 1.5. It's a really quite a solid update, so you should all get that. Now, <clears throat> in terms of the coverage, again, minimal viable product. I think we shipped with like six or 12. I mean, really quite pathetic. But again, we went on the agile mindset. I reintroduced the... Um, Windows Resource Kit, if you remember that, uh, and we've been using that, and uh, uh, we basically got, after a little bit of a startup hiccup, uh, we're now on a monthly cadence of releasing new uh, resources, uh, and I think we're up at uh, 100 180? Well, I, you know, let's find out. So one of the great things about the package repository is you can say, find DSC resource, and we'll say OV, OVA. OV stands for out variable, and what happens is everything that goes to the output stream also gets assigned to a variable. So we're going up to the repository. Now the nice thing about this is in the repository you have modules, but what we've done is we've gone into those modules, parsed them out, and hello. I think that means, what does that mean? That must mean we're not connected to the repository. Anyway, we will parse those. Uh, and uh, find the resources, and then you can say, here's the resource I want, uh, and it'll figure out what, what module it's in. Anyway, I believe that we're up to 190 uh, desired state configuration resources, and that number just keeps growing. And by the way, when you first look at it, you're gonna see things like, oh, file, service, Windows feature, cool stuff, but uh, now when you look at the resources, you're gonna see, see, see stuff like exchange, <laughs> SharePoint, uh, SQL, Active Directory, uh, and it doesn't do all of the elements of that, but step by step, they're getting richer and richer. Next question. In the back. Shout it out, I'll repeat it. What versions of PowerShell is this compatible with? Uh, which part? 
Okay, so which parts, which uh, versions of this is, is compatible with PowerShell? This is all being done in PowerShell version 5 to start off with. PowerShell version 5, uh, we've been making available at down level, uh, not as far as we'd like. Our intention, I want to be really clear about this, this is an intention, not a promise. Um, lots of things go wrong. Our intention is that when PowerShell version 5 ships, uh, it will go down to Windows 7 and above. Now, there are certain features of the work we're doing we feel are so important, so transformational, that we want to carve them out and bring them available and make them available on downloadable versions of PowerShell. Uh, and so PowerShell get is part of that and some elements of desired state configuration. I want to be clear, that's some elements of desired state configuration, not all of them. We probably have time for one more question. Make it a good one. Come on, give it up. Oh, there's one. In the back up. Actually, I didn't hear that one. Yeah, give him the microphone. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So what you do is, I'm not sure why I didn't find those. So like that dollar sign A, oh, yeah, let's see. So I can say install package uh, sys, what? Oh, yeah, chef conf samples minus verbose. And assuming everything's going to be happy here. Are you going to be happy? I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, it's running. OK. Uh, so yeah, it, it, you can. And basically, the two abstractions are packages. Oh, there we go. Uh, packages and modules. OK, cool. OK, yeah, go for it. Any? I don't know what AppCMD is, sorry. Oh, 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 that one. The question was, uh, any uh, intention to bring AppCMD into PowerShell? Um, I don't currently have plans for that. I will say there's sort of a shift in approach here. In the past, PowerShell was very much focused in on uh, platform technology and then leaving it to other teams to, so that other teams can be enabled to then deliver great solutions. Uh, you see within the team, we're saying, hey, that's still a core function. Uh, but we are more and more going to take responsibility for solving a set of problems. So we're going to solve the repository problem. We're going to solve the script sharing problem. We're going to solve the editing problem. Step by step, we're going to solve more and more problems. So uh, you know, I've shown you just a very small set of the things in PowerShell version 5. One teaser, you're just going to love this, um, and then we'll be done. And that is in power, you know, so PowerShell is all about objects. And the great thing about objects is it reduces the need to ever parse text, right? So all you Linux guys know the problem, right? Go over 27, 23 columns, 27 columns, uh, cut off three lines or four lines. If I do that switch, how many is it? And we call this prayer-based parsing, okay? And, and it's amazing that it works. I mean, it actually does sort of work, but I don't know why it works. And, it, and it's a real pain in the butt. And then when you look at those regular expressions, like, Honest to God, I've been in this business a long time, and I can never read those damn regular expressions. Anyway, so PowerShell has regular expressions. That's great. It turns out that no matter how much text, how much, how much objects, many objects you have, there still comes a time when you need to parse text. In PowerShell version 5, we have some Microsoft Research technology, which allows you to parse by example. Parse by example. So what that means is you take a text file, you know, the output, and you go in there and you annotate it and say, hey, this, here's one object, and this is the name, and this is the IP address, and here's a date, time, and this is the year, et cetera. You just, you just write those things, annotate one or two examples of a text file, and you give it to this, and it will auto-generate a parser based upon the example you gave it. And then you can give it new files, and it'll use that parser to parse the text and give you objects back. Crazy cool technology. Um, anyway, so I encourage you to use PowerShell version 5. We are, again, moving on an agile footing there. We release that every couple months with the intent of giving you, to you, give you early access so that you can tell us what's working and not, and then we iterate. So each release we tell you, hey, we think this is stable design. You can pretty much bet on this. 
uh, unless something's severely broken, it won't change. Others, we clearly identify. This is experimental. Use it, try it, tell us about it, but be aware there might be breaking changes. So decide which one's useful for you. With that, stick around. Superstar Steve Morowski is going to tell you about desired state configuration.